All right, guys, uh, today we got my 2016 High Lifter Razor here, and we're doing the CYA radiator relocate on it. So I noticed um, when I was doing research on it that there wasn't much out there in the way of uh, YouTube videos on these or install videos, so I figured I'd make a go at it. Um, so yeah, right now we've just um, removed the radiator um if you're looking for instructions on that i'm sure there's plenty of other videos out there on how to replace a radiator here but um we're going to be going through all the steps they got here they got a pretty decent instruction manual and we got uh i went with the american flag cut i didn't really like the look of the, just the triangles all the way up looked a little chachi to me but um uh, got my mesh all painted up mesh comes in uh, a raw stainless color so painted it so we got uh the white background here so red and white for the stars but thought that would look cool so all right all right guys so we almost made a little error here but um in the directions it doesn't say anything about installing the mesh onto the um, metal frame here until later on um, it just starts telling you to put brackets on and you won't be able to install the mesh with the brackets already on so that's gonna be the next thing you're gonna do after all right guys so finally got this all bolted in all your mesh and everything um, kind of a bit of a pain takes a bit of time but if I had to make a suggestion I would start with these up here in the sides before doing the center big one um, and adding this brackets on it kind of makes it a pain to get at some of these side bolts um, now we're in the process of marking the holes that go on the radiator mounts you see the little punch marks there and drill those through and then uh, get back with you. All right, so we went ahead and drilled our holes out here and here. Um, kind of a pain to mark. Also have went ahead and mounted the radiator back on. Um, kind of fooled me for a minute because <laughs> I took the rate when I took the radiator out it was so packed full of mud and clay still even after pressure washing it out as much as I could after every trip um, that when I put the fan back on I put it on upside down so these little feet here I guess you'd call them that go into the holes there there and there and there did not line up at all I thought I had a uh, defective part but that was a screw up on my end so um yeah happy about that fits in nicely had had to do a little um a little finicky getting these to uh sit to where it'll actually hold the radiator um these brackets here are slotted so you can move them back and forth to kind of sandwich the radiator in between um so yeah We'll get back to you for part two. Probably get back to it tomorrow. All right, guys. So, uh, big difference from the last recording I had for this, uh, kind of got a little carried away and forgot to add some video clips but from last point this wasn't even mounted on the machine yet um we had to put some painters tape down on here and mark off where the holes lined up to once we drilled our holes in the radiator support the original one that is let's see if i can find it here right there on a two inch hole saw was the best size yeah for it's up under there you can see that's where that 90 degree goes um it's kind of uh hard to get at i can't really it's see it from the other side. So yeah, these are your original radiator melts right 
don't know if you can see that. Yep. Well, this is original the radi radiator mount. There's some bolt holes we had to drill through on both sides. See them mounted through. Um, we also had to relocate the um, the overflow tank, the reservoir. Um, the only way you can really get it to bolt on there is crooked like that. Kind of weird, but is what it is. Um, what you got? So this is the top hose that comes out of the chassis for the top of the radiator. If you don't take this off and reposition this, you'll have a big kink in this line here when you try to connect it to the elbow at the top of the So it is easiest to just go ahead and remove the whole hose, hook the top up first, and then come in here. I know the pointer is pretty cool, drill bit three eighths, <laughs> but it works. So, right, we're still in the process of uh, routing the lower one, the lower hose. Um, it's going to attach to this here, give you some extra hose in the kit. Um, yeah, it's been a bit of a pain from this point on, but we're getting it. Right, Pops? Yep. So, check back in with you with another update later. All right, guys. Uh, we ended up having to do the same thing as we did for that top line for the uh, radiator there on the bottom. We spun it around till it made it so there was no kinks in the, in the line for anything. Got all the last bolts hooked up and... It was quite a pain in the butt to do, <laughs> but it looks good. So, yeah, another update with all the tires and everything all done on it. All right, guys, so here's final product. Um, Took it for our first little ride today with the relocate on, but that's my machine. So what we did once we got everything done, we had to fill the reservoir and being where it's located up under, you can see it there, can't access that top really easily. So we had a... With this being the high point, it was nice because we filled the radiators full of the go, pulled the overflow hose, backfilled the reservoir to our max cold and then plugged it back in and it'll burp itself out again with this being the highest point in the whole system right it should be easily um, wet so then we uh we put it on a lift and let it run for a little while get warm enough so i think it went to what would you say 210 205 205 and uh turned on the fan kicked on and Came back off at 190 like it's supposed to and worked fine. So then I threw the tires on and took it down the road or a good couple of mile ride and didn't get over 205 again. Hey, show them this. This is what happens when you go through long grass and can't find rocks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can see it. I smacked a rock pretty good at like 15 mile an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, she's got, she's got her dings, but... It's got all new suspension from last riding season. Um, did some forward A-arms to fit the 34-inch tires. and Rhino 2.0s all the way around. Yep, for axles. And I uh, had some trans issues last year with a snorkel gear, and so I got an upgraded snorkel gear, bigger reverse chain, Gibson yeah. exhaust. In the process of wiring in reverse lights and whip lights. Um yeah, I've done a lot to this machine in the past year, but uh, I got a G-Boost clutch kit. It's a pretty torquey clutch kit in the low end. Uh, it's snappy. It turns these tires like nothing. It'll spin them on the asphalt, so. But, yep. All right, guys. I'll do probably an end-of-season review on uh, once I get a little more familiar with it and if I find any quirks or anything. So, see you guys then.